And welcome to Gateway Live Update. I'm Pastor Joe coming to you live from Gateway Christian Church in historic Woodbury. Well, really, right on the border of Woodbury and West Stefford. And we're here every weekday live to come together and we read some of the word, we think about it, and we pray. We've been praying specifically against coronavirus, COVID-19. Still going around. I didn't expect when we started this a year and two weeks ago that we'd still be here today. But guess what? We're still webcasting daily for us. And it's been fun uh, actually getting in the word on the weekdays for a 15 minute Bible study, meditation and prayer all wrapped up in a short time. Thank you for being along. We encourage you to stay along as we study God's word together as we pray. And I pray that you you know everything's getting better, it seems, a little bad here and there, and uh, never without. So thanks for joining us. We're in Mark chapter 8. We're beginning the 8th chapter of Mark today. If you want to turn there in your Bible, or if you want to use a device, use a device and turn to Mark chapter 8. That begins during those days, the day when Jesus was in Gentile territory, where we were yesterday in uh, Syria and Phoenicia. This is very interesting because there was 5,000 Jews. Now they're coming into the Gentile area those days. A large crowd gathered. And since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. Now, of course, this is way more in detail in Matthew, but this is the brief edited version, we call it. Yeah. He says, I have compassion on these people, for they have already been with me three days and have had nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. And they had. They're out in nowhere land. And it says his disciples answered and said, but where in this remote place can we anyone get enough bread for them? Jesus asked them, how many loaves have ye? And they said, seven. They replied, and he told the crowd to sit down on the ground, and when he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. And so they did. They had a few small fish as well, and he gave thanks to them also and told his disciples to distribute them. And the people ate and were satisfied. And we read this the last, the feeding of the 5,000, satisfied means they were full. So they ate and were satisfied. And afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And about 4,000 were present. That means men besides women and children. After he had sent them away, he got into a boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalmuthia. The Pharisees came and and again, you know, we just call some of that amazing, 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 amazing time that we see here where Jesus fed 4,000 men plus women and children. Could have been like up to 8,000 toward there altogether. But Jesus, that's what Jesus did in a remote place where there wasn't anything. And again, we see the God who provided Israel in the desert for 40 years where there was nothing manna and water and here he provides food bread from heaven literally a couple of loaves that fed four thousand people i mean i you know had catering events for 300 and ran out of food so i know what it feels like but jesus had enough for the four thousand men plus women and children to eat till they were satisfied we're talking god here so interesting. And this is, like I said, in verse 11, the Pharisees came and began to question Jesus to test him. See, they didn't want to know. You know usually ask a rabbi because you want to know something, but they were doing it to test him. They asked him for a sign from heaven. Jesus sighed deeply and said, why does this generation seek for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign shall be given it. And then he just stops there and Mark, of course, we know in the... Matthew and Luke, except for the sign of the prophet Jonah, three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish. And then he left them and got back in the boat and crossed the other side. So now he comes back to Jewish territory. And his disciples had 
forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf they have with them in the boat. So they forgot to go buy bread, you know, because daily food, that's something that they ate all the time. Bread was a staple. Uh, as it is was in most cu countries and most cultures, maybe the one you come from. I know the one I come from, we have bread all the time. Bread with dinner. Still like it, but too many carbs. But I, I do like bread. Good, all kinds of good bread. You know, shouldn't even think about it. Like I said, too many carbs. But they forgot to bring bread except for one loaf. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. Watch out for the yeast, the leaven, the agent that let, makes bread rise. But he said, of the Pharisees and that of Herod. He picks out two groups. The Pharisees, the legalists, and Herod, the politicians. Guess what? They're both around today in the church. The legalists and the politicians, they're there. You see, the church, really, although we do complain, and you hear me say, and i got to watch what I say because I've had videos taken off YouTube, but it is not our job to get into politics and explain politics and rebuke the politicians. We are in a kingdom. A kingdom has a king. And the king is the head of the kingdom. Yes, we live in the United States. Yes, we should be responsible. I Absolutely. But I don't want to take too much time. And I do sometimes because I get frustrated. And I know you do too. We get frustrated by what these jerks are doing in Washington, D.C. So let's, you and I, remember we're members of a kingdom. Especially, you know, as people are going to be thinking this week. We're in a kingdom. And they talked about the Pharisees, the legalists, and Herod, the politicians. And they discussed this with one another and said, it's because we have no bread. So Jesus says to them, they forgot to bring bread, talking about leaven. And he, they think, oh, we forgot the bread. And Jesus wanted some, you know, good, you know, French loaf. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, what are you, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? In other words, what's the matter with you? Are you, your heart's still you no know, really i mean what are you talking about that's you now see i just read it jesus said what are you talking about having no bread that's the way he said that what's the matter with you do you still not see and understand are your hearts still hardened yes do you still have eyes but fail to see and ears and fail to hear and don't you remember hey guys come back a second and, and, and again, we get upset because they're so slow. But if we were there, we'd be just like them. What's, what's the matter with you? Your eyes don't see, your ears don't hear. And you don't remember. When I broke the five loaves or the 5,000, how many baskets did you pick up? Twelve. That's important. Twelve for the, gen, for the Israelites. In Israel, twelve represents not only the twelve apostles, but the twelve tribes and sons of Yaakov, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000 in Gentile territory, seven loaves, seven is God's number of perfection, seven loaves for the 7,000, how many baskets did you pick up? The answer is seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? Come on, wake up, wake up, he's saying. And they came to Bethesda, or excuse me, they came to Bethsaida, totally different place. And some people bought him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. And when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus said, do you see anything? Now, by the way, every time Jesus heals a blind person, he does something different. Last time he stuck the fingers in the ear and he spit on the ground. Now this time it's different. It says that Jesus spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him. So Jesus spit on eyes, really did some healing. And Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and he says, I people, they look like trees. Now, now of course, this is something, you know, I always say, he looked up and I see men as trees walking, the King James Version says. Yeah, something I say all the time, I don't know why, but after this, he put his hands again on his eyes and made him look up and his sight was restored and he saw every man clearly. So Jesus gave an adjustment here. Now there's a reason he did that. Jesus never had a problem healing and focus thing. 
like you know, focus on a camera. He did this for a reason for us. That's why I said there's deep things in the word that we don't understand. And he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to anyone in the town. And Jesus went out and the disciples went in the towns of Caesarea, Philippi. And by the way, he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? And we were in this last Wednesday night in, in Matthew. Who do you say that I am? And the answer is, oh, you look on the immerser, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah and some others say one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, thou art the Messiah. And he charged him that they should tell no one. Now it's neat. Jesus, really, Jesus here, really, really did not actually say anything different here. Then he said in Matthew, so bless our thou son bar Jonah, flesh and blood isn't real this, but he's telling them that this is the truth. I am the Messiah. People say, Jesus don't say it. He's saying, I am the Messiah. He charged him not to tell anyone. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So at this point, Jesus talks about what happened when people celebrate this week the week of Palm Sunday and Holy Monday and today, Holy Tuesday and tomorrow, Holy Wednesday, because it was on this week that Jesus would be rejected by the chief priests, the scribes and the elders and be crucified by the Gentiles, the Romans. And he spoke openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me, Satan, for you don't desire the things of God, but the things of men. And when he called the people to himself with his disciples, he said to them, whoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and fall after me. Listen, if you're a disciple of Jesus, if you think you're one, you will deny yourself. You might desire things, certain things that you want, but God doesn't want you to have. You will deny yourself. You'll let go of them. You'll deny your... Now, again, self-denial and denial of self are two different things. Self-denial is Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or Nutrisystem. There you deny yourself from eating certain food. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about denial of self, of your rights, of what you want. No. You take up your cross and follow after him. Taking up your cross means you're going to die. That's exactly what it means. It doesn't mean anything else, but you're going to die. That's what it is. You want to know what taking up your cross means? It's not a religious jewelry thing. It is someone carrying something that means they're going to capital punishment. That means they're not coming back. They're going, it's a one-way thing. And Jesus said, we daily in Gospel Luke, this verse, are to take up our cross and follow after him. Why, Jesus? Well, we're going to pick up there uh, not till next week, uh, because tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, we're going to have special uh, seasonal messages on the cross. And I hope you can join us. We're going to pray now, but, but I want you to be thinking about that. Jesus was crucified, and people observe that on Good Friday. But he wants us to be on our way to death. Your flesh only has one sentence, and that is death. He does not want you to fix your flesh. He doesn't want you to clean it up. He wants you to die. So when you want something, and that's what fasting is about. Fasting is about where I deny myself whatever I, food and, and, and beverage. And if you smoke tobacco, you learn to deny yourself. That's what God wants us to do. So we're going to pray against coronavirus. We're going to pray for everything else. And I hope you guys really will get with the program. Take up your cross. Follow after Jesus after you deny yourself. Let's pray. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you we're able to come together. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us 
health and healing and prosperity, Lord, even amidst all the de death and dying that went on for a whole year. We thank you, Lord. Uh, I even thank you for the, the pollen and the hay fever and everything else, Lord, the itchy eyes. This time of year and a beautiful day, Lord, too. Clear blue sky. We thank you and we praise you. Bless your holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. We love you. Teach us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow after you. Help us to walk with you. And we thank you, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with another update. Tomorrow night, Bible study. And it'll probably be different again like it was last week. But we'll see you then. Until we greet you on the morrow, may God's richest and blessed be yours.